Hey, good morning YouTube. Today's video, I'm gonna be ranking the Team Affinity 3 All-Star cards from 30 to 1, the way I feel about them, the way I think they, you know, are value-wise and, you know, as far as using them in the game. That way you have an idea of what cards you might like to try first if you haven't done Team Affinity yet. Uh, and if you have, you know, what cards you might wanna use in the events and rank seasons and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at number 30, go all the way down to number one. And uh, if you like this video, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure to leave it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, we are approaching 1000 subs. I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, all kinds of good content here every day. So hit that button, it's free. Turn the notifications on. Usually upload by 9 a.m. every day here on YouTube. And if you have any comments or you have like a personal top five, leave them in the comment section below. I wanna hear what you, th what you think about the cards and what you think about my list. So let's get into this. I ride at number 30. It's not because he's a cub. It's simply because of his pitch mix and how easy he is to pick up and hit. And that's Craig Kimbrell. Um, I don't recommend putting him in your bullpen. I know some people are like, well, I can make him work. You know, he throws hard. Uh, yeah, he might work against, you know, lesser players, but against better players, he's not going to work. He's got great hits and K per nine, like the best you can possibly have. He's got great pitcher clutch. His control's okay, but he's only got two fastballs and a curveball. So you're just going to sit fastball if you're any kind of competent hitter at all. And uh, anything in the zone that's fast, you're just going to nail it. So to me, Craig Kimbrell is the weakest card um, in the set. I do like the card art, though. But yeah, as far as ability, it's the weakest card to me. Number 29. It's like I'm picking on Chicago, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. And that's Carlos Rodon. Um, his per nine's really good. 112, 101. He's got decent control. Good clutch, a lot of stamina. Problem is, again, pitch mix. He's got two fastballs, a changeup, a curveball, and a slider. And if you look here, his pitch control is good on his fastball and slider, uh, but his pitch break is not very good. He, his slider is good, but the thing is, you can read sliders pretty well if you've been playing this game long enough. This pitch mix is just not any good, and there's so many good lefties in the game this year that Rodon probably isn't going to be in anybody's rotation unless... You know, it's a brand new player just going in now, and this is one of the first team affinities they do. The lefty pitcher, and you could argue him, Kikuchi, and Rodon are all, you know, you could put those in any order down here at the bottom. His pitch mix is awful. Two fastballs, change up slider. Um, again, his control's not amazing. His break's really good on his fastball, change up, and two seamer, if that really mattered much, but it doesn't. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, Trevor Rogers is just a bad card. Great in real life. Love him in real life. But in the game, he's just not good. Uh, and he's just, as far as the program goes, he's definitely in the bottom five, which is where I have him. All right, next up, Kevin Gaussman. He's got a splitter, which is, is cool. His per nines are okay. His control is okay. Um, his pitch control is really good on the splitter and four-seamer. The problem is, is his pitch mix. The splitter is easy to, to tell what it is, even though, even if it's got movement. Um, I'm bad at laying off low pitches, so sometimes low pitches can give me a fit, so a guy like Osman could probably give me a fit. But as me using him, and compared to the many other pitchers we have, he just doesn't stack up. So that's why he's, uh, he's sitting at 24 on my list. He just, his pitch mix isn't great. You gotta have a sinker and cutter both. Uh, to be in a rotation or bullpen almost at this point in the year and he has neither um, On paper, he's a good card great defender great fielder, you know, he, he's got good power good contact decent vision and all that and he plays everywhere The problem is I just don't like his swing like I'm just not a fan of his swing and uh, I don't know. I just don't hit well with Chris Taylor. So overall, I'm just not a fan of I mean He's great if you need a bench player. You need somebody off the bench who can come in and play anywhere and hit right-handed. Um, he, he's good for that. But for me, personally, I just don't hit well with this card. And now it starts getting tough because the rest of the cards from here on out, I would use personally. So I have to start ranking them in 
order of how likely I am to use him versus not likely. He doesn't. He's not a good defender, so he's definitely a bench bat. And as far as bench bats goes, there's probably better op options. But if you're one of those people that needs a big PCI on All Star Hall of Fame, this guy's got you covered. 124 vision. He's got decent power against righties. He's got great contact against lefties and righties. He just doesn't have the threshold 80 power, even paralleled. Uh, plus five parallel only gets him to 75, so he's not a great option against lefties if you want pop. And power reigns supreme in this game this year and usually, so uh, that's why I have Brantley where I have him. But overall, he's a really good card, so I wouldn't be I wouldn't be upset, you know, using him. So next up is another as another guy that doesn't defend well, and he plays right field. Um, he doesn't have a great arm. Um, but I like his swing, and that's Teoscar Hernandez. Again, these next, you know, starting four or five positions ago, um, guys are all about the same, you know, level. I, I would use him off the bench, and that's it, because he, he doesn't defend. I just think he's, he's a decent bench bat, but the next guy is a better bench bat, probably one of the two or three best bench bats in the game. But Teoscar, that's why I have him where I have him. Next up is German Marquez. Uh, I know a lot of people are sleeping on this card, but I really, really liked in the little bit of limited time I got to use him. His sinker is surprisingly okay. He's got a four, uh, good forcing fastball, slider, knuckle curve, and change up. If you look here, he's got good control on his slider and his sinker, which is important, and his movement on his slider and sinker are both okay too. His sinker is surprisingly good. Like, He's got 83K per nine, um, 112 clutch, 109 hit per nine. So um, solid statistically. I just feel like he plays better than his 96 overall. Like he, I just think he's one of the couple of better starting pitchers in this program. And I know a lot of people are sleeping on him because, you know, whatever. But I, I'm telling you right now, I enjoy using that, uh, this card. And I think he's better... Um, than a couple of the other starters in this program. All right, next up, Jared Walsh. Uh, he's not a good defender. He doesn't have a lot of speed, but for some reason, this card just absolutely mashes. Um, his swing is really nice. He doesn't have great contact against lefties or vision, um, but he, he hits the ball hard. Like every time he hits it, he hits the ball hard. Very good, solid first baseman. The problem is there's a crap ton of first baseman this year. So yeah. That's the problem. But if you're looking for a solid card off the bench uh, to hit right-handed uh, pitchers, he's very, very good at that. And that is Kikuchi. His hits per nine is decent. Uh, his K per nine is not. Uh, his home run per nine, I don't believe matters, but it does not good either. His clutch is good. He's got a cutter, but uh, the problem is his pitch mix. He's got four pitches, cutter, slider. They're both gonna move about the same. Uh, four seamer changeup. As you can see here, his pitch control is really good on his changeup, but his main pitches is not. And his movement, again, is best on his worst pitch, and it goes backwards. So everything's backwards for him, which is really, really weird. Um, so yeah, I, I would use Kikuchi before I would use Rodon, but that's not saying a lot. All right, next up, Jake Cronenworth. Um, I'm it says he can be a relief pitcher. I have not tried that yet. He plays second base. He can also play first, third, and shortstop. Um, he's a left-handed hitter. He's got amazing vision. He's a good defender. Um, a solid second baseman. This is no knock on him. There's just, I think the other cards that are still left are better. But this is a solid, solid card. Um, and if you need a second baseman, uh, I highly suggest going to get him. He's got a nice swing. He's got great contact versus lefty and righties. He hits for a lot of power against right-handed pitching. Um, you can get him past the 80 threshold if you parallel him. He'll get to 81, and he's got a, a nice size PCI on Hall of Fame with 110 vision. He won't hurt you defensively. He's got 83 speed. Very solid card, and uh, yeah, I, I like this card a little bit. I just have Jackie Robinson and uh, and another guy that's in this uh, in this lineup that uh, will play ahead of him. All right, next up, another guy that I love in BR. Um, but in rank seasons, especially, you know, once you start getting into Hall of Fame, his PCI is just too small for somebody like me. Uh, he's only got 48 vision, but he's maxed out power. He kills left-handers. He doesn't hit righties. 
So that's why I have Zenito down here. And there's better catching. Both JT and um, Salvador Perez are better overall than Zenito. Uh, but, you know, I, I still like him. I still like him in BR just in rank seasons and stuff. And compared to other catchers we have, that's why I have him where I have him. All right, next up, Adam Frazier, another solid second baseman. Um, I don't think he's not as good as, as Albies, uh, but he's solid. Uh, he doesn't have any speed, but he's a good defender. He's got a humongous PCI. That's what she said. 119 vision. Uh, he's not going to hit any home runs for you, really. He might hit one against a lefty, but not very often. But great contact, huge PCI. Uh, one of those people that if you need help with a larger PCI, he's perfect for you to slot in at second base. Um, I just prefer Albies uh, over Frazier, but Frazier's a solid, solid card. All right, JT Real Muto, another diamond defender. He's got more speed than Salvi. Um, his vision is nice at 85. He doesn't hit, surprisingly, lefties with as much power as he does righties, so he's got reverse splits. But for some reason, I prefer his his swing um, to some other right-handed hitting catchers. I don't think he's as good as Perez, though. Perez is, is the best catcher uh, in the program, in my opinion. But Sal, uh, JT is very nice and a very solid option, um, you know, if you need to pick somebody in the East after DeGrom. All right, next up, and I might catch some flack for this, but Nelson Cruz, the reason I say it is he's strictly a bench bat. You can't really play him in the outfield unless you really don't care about defense. But if you need somebody to get up and hit for you, this is the dude. 95 vision, 114 power versus lefty, 121 versus righty. So he hits even better against righties. 125 contact against lefties, 89 against righties. Uh, he, he mashes. This card is a beast off the bench. Just not one that I would recommend putting in your starting lap. That's why I have him where I have him. Uh, he just doesn't have any defense or speed. But off the bench, probably one of the two or three best bench cards in my opinion. And, and so he's he's usable in that aspect. Cedric Mullins, again, he his defense is awful. His defense is god-awful in center field. Um, that's why I have him where I have him, because this card rakes. Like, uh, he hits everything, but again, he's just going to be a bench card. Um, he hits uh, left-handed, but he hits against lefties and righties. Uh, but again, he doesn't have uh, defense at all. Like he, And I've used him a couple times in center field. He gets really bad animations. So I don't recommend playing him unless you're absolutely desperate. You can maybe play him in left field. Uh, but, you know, he rakes. I mean, this card hits hits very well. So um, that's why he's as high as he is, only because of his swing and the way he hits. Next up, Adolis Garcia. Um, they have him in center. He gets some weird animations for me. Um, his vision 68 is okay if you're a goon, if you're really good. Um, his his uh, contact and power will carry you, and you can handle the vision uh, loss on Hall of Fame. But if you're not, if you're just an average player like me, I consider myself to be, you know, maybe ab I'm probably above average, but you know what I'm saying. I, I just, there's uh, there's so many outfield options, there's better options to me. I like Adolis. I root for Adolis in real life because he's a former Cardinal and he's a great dude. Um, but overall, I just feel like there's many more better outfield options in the game, especially for newer or average type players, you know what I mean? Next up, it's Salvi Perez. This dude is a beast, diamond defense, diamond hitting. Um, he hits the ball hard. If you use the Salvi from uh, Team Affinity 1, you know how good his swing is and how good his card is, excuse me. Um, and I absolutely love this card. Um, probably my third favorite catcher in the game right now behind the other catcher in this program. And, uh, of course, Schwab God. Yeah, everybody loves Schwab God. But very, very solid catching option right here. Up next, Josh Hader. He has maxed out hit per nine, K per nine. He's filthy, really, really good. Um, I think he's the second best lefty bullpen in this in this program. Good fastball as usual. He, they, he's got a changeup, which makes him, you know, pretty decent. Uh, the pitch control on the fastball and slider is really, really good, as you see. And his pitch break on his two seam, four seam. Sliders okay, but the changeup is the big thing. Just having the changeup makes him usable, uh, usable where usually Josh Hader cards aren't that usable. But this one is, and it's decent. But I think there's a better lefty reliever in the program. All right, next up's my favorite left-handed reliever and one of my three favorite pitchers in this program, and that's Gregory Soto. 
as you can see, he's got 124 hits per nine, 114 K per nine, good pitching clutch. He's got a sinker, a fastball, uh, a change up and slider. As you can see, his control leaves a lot to be desired. He's only got 61 control and his best controlled pitch is the slider, but he throws everything hard. It feels like there's more movement on it than it says there is. His sinker is just heavy and nasty and his fastball is hard and fast. And uh, his ch he's got a deceptive windup too. I feel like this Soto is, is better than Hayter, and I feel like it plays up much more than his stats do. And I, I really like this Gregory Soto card. Like they, they, did, they did pretty good on this, even though it's supposed to not have very much control. I haven't had much problem with pinpoint pitching using them. So Ozzy Albies hitting defense, diamond, 73 speed is an awful, 100 vision, 120 power versus left. He's got reverse splits. He kills left-handed pitching. He hits right-handed pitching too, though. Um, this card is very, very solid. You can play him at short, but just play him at second base. Um, he's, he's a solid defender there. If you don't have Jackie Robinson, to me, this is the second best second baseman in the game uh, right now. That's just my opinion because uh, he switch hits. And I, I, I don't know. I just love switch hitters. But yeah, Ozzy Albi is an absolute beat. Up next, Nicholas Castellanos. Again, I don't use him on my starting lineup because of his defense and there's there's other outfield options. But off the bench, yes, he's on my bench. 92 vision, 112 power against lefties, 100 against righties, max contact against lefties and righties. <clears throat> he's got a ton of clutch. Dude, it just hits tanks. Like he hits everything hard on the ground, line drives, over the fence, everything is a bomb and he's got a really good swing. Um, yeah, if he had any, if he had Aaron Judge's defense, he'd be in my top five. He'd be ahead of Aaron Judge, uh, but he don't. He's not a great defender. He's just okay. It's okay to play him in right field. Um, so if you do, that's fine because his offense is 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 great. But sometimes you will get some wonky animations. All right, next up is Aaron Judge. Judge is one of those people that I don't hit really well with. Uh, he's a great defender, like stupid good defender. Look at 99 fielding, 90 arm, 99 accuracy, and 99 reaction. Like it, as far as right field fielding goes, he's the GOAT. Like it's, it's amazing. Um, he's got great power, 103 and 124 righty lefty, good contact, 70 vision. You know, it's it's right on that borderline of, you know, the PCI is just okay. You know what I mean? On Hall of Famer higher. On All-Star though, or lower, this dude is an absolute god. Um, and if you're good with the PCI on Hall of Fame, then he, he's going to be a god too. Next up, Trey Turner. There's an there's a an argument that people say, oh, Story's better than Turner. Turner's better than Story. I've used them both a little bit. I prefer Story overall because of his defense. But Turner is not awful at shortstop. Just don't play him. I don't recommend playing him in center field or any place besides shortstop. Maybe second base. But I would just leave him at shortstop. 99 speed, 93 steal, 99 base running. This, this dude steals all the bags. Um, he just doesn't have a great arm. But 97 vision, 86 power against lefty, 100 against righty. Another one of those reverse split power guys. 111 contact against righty, 125 against lefty. Really, really solid. Um, I only take Trevor Story ahead of Turner because of the defense. And I feel like he hits for a little more power. Story seems so sometimes, even though he's got the power, it feels like sometimes his balls just die. All right. Rafael Devers, my current third baseman. I know it says he has 79 power against lefties. But he hits, he hits lefties better than that. I think I have as many home runs against lefties as I have against righties. Because it seems like every time he comes up and there's a chance to use the bullpen, the bullpen is used. And I always hit, hit, hit whoever they bring in, Hater or whoever it is. Um, he's got 84 vision, 125 power versus righties, 79 against lefties. Uh, once he's paralleled, he'll be over the 80 threshold. 113 contact against righties, 90s against lefties. He's an okay defender at third base. He's got a really strong arm. Uh, I've made a couple plays where he's dove for the ball against guys with 90 plus speed, and he just got a laser for an arm over to first base. So Rafael Devers just outside my top five, but very, very good in my third baseman right now. All right, next up, this dude, I've been playing him in right field a little bit because I just love his swing. He, he doesn't really hurt me as bad as Castellanos does in right field with defense, and that's Castellanos' main 
position, but 92 vision, 115 power against lefties, 105 against righties, 97 uh, contact, 92 against righties. He's got reverse splits. He hits left-handers. It's freaking awesome. Uh, I, I, this is this is this is why he's in my top five because Matt Olson just absolutely flat out rakes, and I love swinging the bat with Matt Olson. That's why he's in my top five. One of my five favorites right here, Jose Ramirez. He can play third, first, second, short, left. Diamond hitting. His defense is just okay, but I usually play him at shortstop or third base if I if I am playing him, which I usually do. He's a switch hitter. He's got 109 visions. PCI is very, very nicely sized if you need that. Uh, 74 power against lefties. Once I get him paralleled, that'll be 79. So it's not great, but guess what? He hits home runs as a right-hander still. Uh, 125 power versus righties. He absolutely destroys right-handed pitching. Um, he's got very good contact against lefties, lesser righties. But again, he destroys left-handed pitching, and I even hit well with him from the right side. I absolutely love Jose Ramirez cards every year, and that's why Jose is in my top five. All right, next up, this guy is in my top five because he can play everywhere and he can mash. Um, he's got diamond defense at third base. I usually play him at, at third or left field. Uh, just depends on where I'm putting Chipper, but you can put this dude anywhere. Second base is, is another good spot for him. 91 vision, 111 power versus lefties, 108 versus righties. Good contact, great swing, like one of the best swings in the game. And he's a switch hitter. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I love Escobar cards. This is his best card in the game. And that's why he's in my top five because I just absolutely mashed with Eduardo Escobar. And I love this card. I highly recommend this card. All right, next up, it's my dude, Alex Reyes. My favorite reliever, not just because he's a Cardinal, but because I just love his pitch mix. 125 hits per nine, 116 K per nine, 125 clutch. He doesn't blow saves in real life and he doesn't blow them in the game. He's got outlier on his sinker and he's got a heavy hard fastball. He's got a slider, a 12-6 curve, which is disgusting, and a changeup. And if you look at his pitch control, he controls his slider fastball very well. Says he doesn't have great control on his sinker, but with pinpoint, I feel like that's wrong. And look at the movement on his pitches. His 12-6 is disgusting. Um, slider is very good. I know people say, ah, the 12-6 is so easy to hit. Not if you are good with pinpoint and you can place that thing where you want it to go. I have uh, several examples and clips of how I've just absolutely fooled people with this 12-6 curveball. I love this Alex Reyes card. Probably my favorite reliever right now. Of course, at number one, there's no surprise, Jacob DeGrom. This card is nasty. I know people say, oh, well, he's so easy to hit, and blah, 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 blah. He's not. If you know how to use pinpoint pitching, like, he gets so much weak contact, 120 hits per nine, 116K per nine, 98 uh, walks per nine, 99 homers, 117 pitching clutch, 90 control. Look at the control on the fastball and slider. All, like, all his pitches are in the red. His movement is crazy good. And he can hit, as you look here. Here's his hitting stats. He's got 62 vision, decent uh, contact and power. He's not Shohei, of course, but uh, versus, you know, other pitchers that, you, that we have in the game. He's right. He, he's very, very good. He's second best hitting pitcher in the game. And uh, that's why he's number one is because he can bring it. He can hit. And I love this card. Like, I absolutely love this card for pinpoint pitching, especially. Because uh, if you can locate your fastball and not give him the fastball all the time, just throw a lot of curveballs, change up sliders. Once you do throw that fastball, they ain't hitting it. 100%, they're not hitting it. And that's why I have the GOAT at number one on my list. All right, so that's the video from 30 to 1. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps you. If you haven't done Team Affinity yet, or if you have and you're looking for some ideas of how to put your team together, I hope this video helps. Um, please leave some comments in the comment section below. Let me know what your order is for like the top five. Let you know. Let me know what you think about my order. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it very, very much. It helps out the channel a ton. And if you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. It really helps out the, uh, the channel too. Make sure to check out all my videos. Watch them as long as you can, as much as you can. I appreciate that. Y'all are helping me get to this YouTube partnership, and it's very awesome. I really put a lot of time and effort in uh, to YouTube this year since MLB The Show launched. I haven't missed a day yet. I've uploaded every day, and I'm trying to help. Uh, the community as much as possible, especially the newer and average players who are always looking for help 
uh, with what cards to use and how to do different things in the game. So I hope I'm helpful in that way, and I hope you guys appreciate uh, everything that I'm doing. And until next time, you can catch me right here, same buck time, same buck channel.